The logos of my Tidmouth Docks Authority fleet are painted in this distinctive blue on black with red lining. I love the way it looks but it is fiddly to apply. For the previous logos this involved adding the lining piece by piece using sheets from Fox Transfers which are great. There are some challenges though such as the risk of getting air bubbles because they are straddling a paint join. You can also see some of them have wrinkled when lacquer was applied. Last year I acquired an Oki laser printer which can print in white. It's not as amazing as traditional decal printers but is pretty versatile within its limits. I wanted to see if it would be possible to print the livery in large decals. For this test I need a new loco, we'll acquire it in the traditional way. This is a prototype for forthcoming Heidi's Hobbies kit. It's on an old Daypole Terrier chassis and represents a kitten similar to that used on the Manchester Ship Canal Railway network. I've done some prep by sanding down the surfaces using filler primer and wet and dry, then spraying it satin black. Next we'll fire up Adobe Illustrator and use the orthographic view of the loco to draw the livery. I'm using as close as I can get to British Rail Blue. I added up the corners and doing this the old way would have used up approximately 50 individual pieces of lining. I add the red lining as a stroke effect. Designing it as a vector image allows me to manipulate the corners to how I want them to be. Other areas like the cab side can also be added and tweaked. Then I duplicate and flip the lining as appropriate, hide the unnecessary layers, then hit print. The advantage of the laser printer is that it does this very quickly. Note that this is a CMYW machine rather than CMYK. This means that instead of black toner it has white. To make black it has to mix cyan, magenta and yellow together. The decals look faded because they are printed upside down. Normally you assume that the paper is white, so all you are doing is adding colour to the white. If you used a normal printer and clear decal paper, the transfers would go semi-transparent as soon as they lifted off the paper. With this printer, it prints the colours first and then adds a layer of white on top. When flipped over, the white does the same job the paper would do on a normal printer and provides a base coat of sorts. With the laser printed decals, you can just use cold water, it doesn't need to be warm. What you do need, and I swear by this stuff, is some Microsol and Microset, other makes are available. I can't get decals to work properly without these. Microset makes the transfer grip the surface and helps prevent the clear film being visible, which is known as silvering. Sol makes the decal extra flexible, which means that it can conform to panel joins, rivets and other details. Sticking the decal in the water, I liberally apply microset to the surface. The transfer will start to come off the backing film within 30 seconds. Flipping it over reveals the true colour and I must say I'm over the moon with this. I had to thicken up the red lining to make it print properly but it's come out well. I was pleasantly surprised by the depth of colour in the blue. Next I break out the microsole and give it a coat on top. At this point the decal will be far too damp to dry but I want to get the solution soaked in. After a little while I get a big brush to help soak up some of the setting solution. Being very gentle is key here as I don't want to move the transfer around too much.
Once it's dried a bit, I can check and see if it's conforming to the body side rivets. Not enough, so some more microsole is ladled on with the brush, gently expelling the trapped air underneath. There were a few bubbles on the back of the cab afterwards, but I dabbed a little bit of microsole on and popped them with the end of a scalpel blade, pushing them down with the brush, allowing the air to escape and the decal to sit flat. This is what it looks like and I'm chuffed to bits with it. Handily this loco doesn't have many handrails which would have required a bit more finagling, but now it's off to be detailed and weathered so expect to see it in a Sudrian spotlight at some point. Thanks for watching, hope this has been interesting and if you have any questions about the process then please do leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. Bye for now!